Hey, it's morning again, and here you are, and here I am. Let's read from Lamentations, the last part of chapter 2. We're in chapter 2, verses 20 to 22, and then we'll think about it together. See, O Lord, and consider, to whom have you done this? Should the women eat their offspring, the children they have cuddled? Should the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? Young and old die on the ground, in the streets. My virgins and my young men have fallen by the sword. You have slain them in the day of your anger. You have slaughtered and not pitied. You have invited as to a feast day the terrors that surround me. In the day of the Lord's anger, there was no refugee or survivor. Those whom I have borne and brought up, my enemies have destroyed. So this is a really grim ending for Lamentations chapter 2. Remember that each of these is going through the Hebrew alphabet, Alpha, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, Hey, going through the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like all 22 verses in each of these chapters start with one of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Now we're at the last part, and chapter 2 has been uh, all about God's anger. It might seem counterintuitive to us to have a whole chapter of the Bible about God's anger. Why is God angry? Go read the book of Jeremiah, and it should be pretty clear for us. But here, through his prophet, he's trying to show where he wants his people to go. But there's a very strong ending here on the anger of God. Notice, to whom have you done this? And then the, the terrible things that happened while Jerusalem was under siege in those two and a half years, especially after when all the food was gone, there was cases of cannibalism there. There were people eating other people because there was nothing else to eat. I'm not, I'm not justifying it. We're just saying this is what the history records. Terrible, terrible, un, unspeakable, terrible things that happened there. The priests and prophets slain right in the sanctuary. Death on every side. Slaughter. So many dead. Why? Why did it even ever have to be? God doesn't want to do this. This is his strange work when he allows things like this. God wants to, he, is, he wants to give us a future and hope. He has thoughts of peace to give us good things. But when the kings and the princes and the priests and the prophets, when they all turn against and they, they destroy and undermine what God is creating, what God is building, then we have this case, again, where God wipes away all the leadership, sends the whole group into captivity, and is going to raise up new leaders who can be true to his word. Things should never go to that extremity. But they have here. And so there's no lightning of God's anger here. It's represented full strength. The good thing here and a lesson for us is that although God's anger and wrath is poured out full strength, so too is his love and patience and his restoration, his desire to redeem and restore. So we're going to come now into the next chapter. God's anger is full against sin. He, he is a purer eyes than to behold evil. May we let him change our eyes so that we are of purer eyes and to behold evil. Let's pray. Father in heaven, these verses have described your anger at full tilt. Continue to be angry at sin, but help us, Lord, forgive us and transform us. Give us pure hearts and minds in this hour, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And there's a prayer for us.